Right now, this is a very famous piece of music, the Canon by a composer named Parkleville. Now, if you've been to uh, some weddings, it's very likely that uh, this piece of music has been played by maybe some violins as the bride is going down the aisle. Um, it's um, used a lot for things like weddings. Um, it's a very slow moving piece and it has a beautiful chord progression. I'll just play the chord progression for you and a little hint. When you learn these chords, C, G, A minor, E minor, F, they're all the chords you need. You can strum them. Or, when you learn later on in the book how to use your right hand on the classical guitar like this, you can just make up your own picking pattern and each chord has just two pulses on it. But I'm playing quavers or quick quick notes like this. So I'm playing four of those notes on each chord. So I put my left hand on a C major chord position and then G and then A minor E minor F and then F again and G and that chord pattern you'll notice just goes over and over four bars of those chords and it just goes over and over and over and the melody just sits up on top of that so uh, once you know those chords very thoroughly and you know how to use your right hand like this again you don't need the backing CD. Um, if one of you plays the chords, or some of the class members play the chords, picking like that, and then other people play the melody line, uh, you can have a beautiful little guitar ensemble playing the Parkable Canon. Just for the moment, let's learn the melody. All you need to do is learn the C major um, scale, a bit earlier in the book on the major scales page, on page 12 and you'll very quickly learn the notes. There are some other notes on there. I think the lowest note that it goes down to is A, or open fifth string, which you should have learned in one of our previous songs anyway. So the first note is on open first string. Okay, and basically this melody is very simple and based around the C major scale. Okay, and it jumps around a little bit. Another very important feature don't get this confused with the fret numbers. But at the beginning of the second line, there's a big number one there. And then at the beginning of the third line, there is a, a number two there. Now I can't demonstrate that here on this video because there's only one of me. But on the backing track, you can try that. And if there's two or three of you um, in a group, then you play just the first line, then as you get to this point, and the second line, as you hit that note, your friend starts playing from the beginning. As you hit the second line, as you start the second line, and it sounds like that, having those two notes at the same time, and keep going like that. And then when the first person gets to the second line, third person can start playing right at the very beginning. And then when you get to the very end, or you, you'll actually see a repeat sign at the end of the third line. So don't play that last bar right down the bottom until you decide you're going to finish it. Okay? You just bounce straight back to the beginning and you can keep doing it over and over again. So let's just play that through. Uh, just the melody line. And if you've learned the scale, you should know the notes. Nice slow pulse. One, two, three, four. Okay, at this point, the second person starts there at the beginning, as you get to there. Okay, now the third person will start playing at the beginning here. Except when you get to the very end and decide that the first person decides they're going to finish it. Okay, and that's a very effective piece of music and very relaxing and fun to play. Now, again, we're using a very famous 
uh, tune by a very famous composer. And there's a few interesting little notes about this tune on page 23, if I had words. Um, interestingly enough, it didn't originally have words, this tune. It was part of a very famous piece called the Orbit Symphony by a composer named saint Song. And he was also uh, known to have written a lot of other wonderful pieces of music, including a piece called Carnival of Animals. Ask your teacher about that. Maybe you've got the CD for some of those other pieces of music um, in your classroom, and you can have a listen to them. So uh, you'll notice too, if you've wa watched the um, that great Australian film Babe, um, all about the pig uh, who tries to become a sheepdog, um, this tune occurs right through that whole film. So we're going to learn to play it. Now, um, very simple chords, and then G, C, A minor. Um, make sure that you practice the C major scale again. And you'll have all the notes, but you'll notice the, um, for example, the very first note on the fourth line, on the bottom line, has a sharp in front of it. Now normally we play, play that note, the G, we play that, just no fingers on the third string. But when we put a sharp in front of it, um, you have to put your first finger on the first fret because that's one semitone or half step higher. So one fret higher on the guitar, okay? Because each fret on the guitar is a half step or a semitone distance, okay? So, um, we've learned the scale and we're going to play the melody, okay, very quickly. Right, now we're going to try playing the melody line for If I Had Words. Uh, wonderful tune by French composer Camille Saint-Saëns. Now the first note is on the second fret on the fourth string and we're in 4-4 four, four time. But in 4-4 four, four time, this melody moves along quite quickly. So we go, listen to the counting to make certain, we always count things in or on the backing tracks, I either have a click track or an introduction so you hear um, how it's going to go. It's going to go quite quickly. One, two, three, four. very easy to move your fingers around the fingerboard and play that melody. 